uh, we start out with the worst case scenario, which is um, a really dark photo. Now let me tell you, that photo was taken using a Casio camera you buy for $100. So this is my dark photo, that's the before, and here's the after. Now what's amazing is that if you take a dark photo into Photoshop, and you try to brighten it up, you're going to see this wonderful problem that we've been staring at for years called grain and noise. People think that noise is garbage. We spent the last several years proving to the world it's not garbage. It's actually good data if you only know how to look at it intelligently. So I can see details on the tablecloth over here. Whereas in contrast, when I go back to the noisy one, the human eye cannot see any of the details that are there. Now since nobody ever believes me when I go from a black photo to a fully exposed one, I'm going to do this live in front of you so you see exactly how it's done. First, you need Photoshop. We're in Photoshop world, but in our case, our products work in Photoshop, they work in Lightroom, they work in Aperture, but right now I'm in Photoshop. Under Filter, choose Topaz Adjust. I'm going to zoom in on it just so you can see what's going on. Now you all know what's going to happen if I crank up the exposure, right? You're going to see all the noise and the grain. Well, it's time to turn on our incredible technology. Crank it up just a smidgen. Three, two, one. Bye bye, noise. I'm done. That's it. What it used to look like is this dark photo. And here's what it looks like now. Now, I know that that's pretty extreme. Because usually, when you have a dark photo, you have a situation that looks like, uh, let's take an example over here. You have a situation like this. When I studied photography, my dad, who was my teacher, said, Go and expose out the window. Everything inside is going to be garbage. Well, my dad was wrong. <laughs> I do this all the time. I'm always exposing out the window. It just so happens that everything that's on the inside is going to just magically come along for the ride. Now, we've also always been interested in the classic problems of photography. For example, if you're standing in front of the Eiffel Tower and it's an overcast day, what do you do? Well, it's a good thing I got Topaz, because I'm going to show you how we're going to transform a single JPEG of the Eiffel Tower. This time, I'm using it right inside of iPhoto, which is great, because I didn't want to jump into Photoshop this time, and I wanted to show you how we work everywhere. As I start cranking this up, look what happens. Not only does the Eiffel Tower keep getting brighter and brighter, you also notice all the details that were hidden in the clouds, even though it's a JPEG, just magically come out. If you zoom in on it, you can see that there's a little bit of noise. Don't ever let the noise bother you. Turn on Topaz Denoise, crank it up just a small bit, and you'll watch the noise disappear as well. So please keep in mind, a few seconds ago, we had a silhouette of the Eiffel Tower, which is, this is where I was, and now it looks like one of those HDR images. You guys have heard of that whole HDR thing, right? Yeah. Well, HDR normally takes a lot of time. What you're supposed to do is take a camera, lock it down on a tripod, and then you're supposed to take one, two, three, four photos, combine them all together to get that. We said, no, thank you, we have a better idea. What if I only take one of those photos and I give you better results? Well, we can compare. Here's what happens when you got four photos. You look out the window, you notice the palm leaves are blurry, I just remember that, so you can see that. In contrast, you look at what we do, it's perfectly sharp. Well, why are the palm leaves blurry? Well, because when you go back to the four photos, when you look out the window, you'll notice the leaves are being moved by the wind. Of course, if the wind moves the leaves around and you combine it, you're going to get blur. In contrast, ours is sharp. Well, of course it's sharp. It's because it only came from one single photo. And what's really interesting is that this is the example that Adobe gives you on how you're supposed to do HDR. We're actually using their own examples against them, which makes it fun. <laughs> and it also means that with our technology, you're going to do high dynamic range water, because obviously you cannot ask the water to stand still while you take four photos. In our case, all you do is just take a photo, exposing for the brights, and it let Topaz take care of all the dogs. Here's another one. A really nice composition. This photographer had the birds in the foreground, the waves, the gill in the background. Unfortunately, the whole thing just kind of looks gray. But then after it goes through Topaz, it looks like a painting. Now, it's obvious when I show you any of these things that the origin is photography. Now, if you don't look at these images and say to yourself, that's a painting, right? It just looks like a photograph, even though we're here to define a new aesthetic for you. We want to show you things that you never thought was possible. And that's why all of our Topaz users constantly win awards in photography competitions because they use a technology that creates a new look. On the opposite side of the spectrum of things that look like photographs, when you come to Photoshop world, everybody does not use a camera. 
There are people in Photoshop world that are not photographers. So, what is the origin of images like uh, this one over here? Where did these images come from? I drew it. Yeah, well, somebody was talented. They grab a pencil and a paper and they draw something, right? My God, him. Don't you know I'm the fake artist? You are. Yes. Here's what happens. This guy dresses up in these uh, Transformer costumes. The first thing I did is I spent about a minute making him look like a cartoon. Second thing I did is I spent about a minute making him look like a pencil sketch. Fake art. I'm going to convert all of you here to the greatest fake artists. Are you ready? <laughs> Here's how it works. First, you need a photograph. In my case, since I'm a guy, I'll start out with a Ferrari. I'm going to spend 25 seconds either making it look like pen and marker, or pencil sketch, or I can even throw some color at it too. Here's the way you're going to do it. Choose Topaz Simplify. You're going to see a revolutionary image processing function that you never thought was possible. If I zoom in on the Ferrari logo, just move one slider. Watch what happens. Poof, it's gone. Wait a minute. <laughs> there used to be a Ferrari logo, but not anymore. In fact, there used to be headlights on this Ferrari too, but now they magically disappear. The computer is throwing away information based on size, based on how big something is on the screen. Well, as an artist, not only do you want to throw away information, you want to also throw away color. And then it's time to introduce the lines or the edges into our image. Unfortunately, lines traditionally or classically are a problem. Let me show you what the problems look like. You see over here? These are reflections. An artist would never draw these lines. But we have taught the computer how to ignore the lines that an artist would just never draw. So since I promised you I was going to do it in 25 seconds, I am done. <laughs> okay, uh, here's what it looks like full frame. I'll hit the OK button. And the computer does a few calculations. And, da 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 da. Here's the final result. If you leave the shading in, it looks like a pen and marker. If you take the shading out, it looks like a pencil sketch. If you throw some color at it, you got color. <laughs> I always leave the best for last. It's the latest baby, Topaz Remask. Remask came from the need to be able to cut something away from its background very efficiently and quickly and have the highest detail possible for the highest quality. So in this case, I like the dog, I don't like the background, so I gotta cut the dog out. I give myself about five seconds to do it. Choose Remask. Grab a nice thick brush and go around the edges. All right. All I'm doing right now is just waiting for the computer to give me the final results. This is the mask. This is the cutout. When you hit the OK button, you have to zoom in to show everybody that every fine detail has been perfectly taken into consideration. Instantly separating anything away from its background so you can put it anywhere you want. That's what Green Mask is all about. Now, uh, I'll make one, another one for you just to show you in more detail what the interface is like. This time with a palm tree. Palm trees are difficult because there's a lot of leaves and details around the palm tree. But the workflow is exactly the same. I did some of this work from before just to make it faster for you. The way that it works is the red identifies the parts that are the background. Blue identifies the difficult parts of the image that we want the computer to calculate. And then finally, green identifies the areas which are solid. For example, I know that the tree trunk is solid, that's why I make it green. And based on this limited amount of input, this is what the computer came up with. Now, it's not perfect because if you zoom in on it, I want you to see how there's a few areas over here where there's some contamination. See how that's supposed to be the background? We have this wonderful technology that we call Magic Brush. All you do is just click in the areas that are giving you a problem and instantly it fixes it for you. If you think that the tree trunk is giving you a problem, it's because there's a lot of details around the tree trunk. Well, it's not a problem really. Just <laughs> grab the Magic Brush and click in some of these regions and again instantly it's going to clean it all up for you without having to have the accuracy of a stylus to get all this wonderful precision just using your mouse. Now, I'm pretty happy with the way that things are looking right now. I said, okay. What you're looking at on the screen right now is a composite. And what that means is, this is actually the original photograph. And because this is now a cutout, as we showed you before, you put the cutouts anywhere you want. That is Remask.